Good morning and welcome to our service of morning prayer this morning on this, the third Sunday of, just to get it right, the, the, uh, the third Sunday after the Epiphany. Um, we will start our service by singing hymn number 627, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. with you. Jesus said, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Our service of morning prayer will be found on page 101 of your prayer books. Beloved in Christ, we come together to offer to Almighty God our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to confess our sins and to receive God's forgiveness, to hear his holy word proclaimed and to bring before him our needs and the needs of the world and to pray that in the power of his spirit we may serve him and know the greatness of his love. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Merciful Lord, grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand and we continue on page 103. O Lord, open our lips, and, and our, our mouth, mouth will, will proclaim, proclaim your, praise. your praise. O Lord, make speed to save us. O Lord, o Lord make, make haste, haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. We remain standing for our, our next hymn, 
number 488. for our first reading. A reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, starting at verse 1. But there will be no gloom for those who are in anguish. In the former time, he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time, he will make glorious the way of the sea the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who have walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multi multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. This is the word of the Lord. Our appointed psalm for this morning is psalm number six, uh, sorry, psalm number 27, and it will be found on page 619 of your prayer books page 619 and we will say half verse alternately the Lord is my light and my salvation whom then shall I fear when the wicked even my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh 
Though a host encamp against me, my heart shall not be afraid. One thing have I asked of the Lord, and that alone I seek. To behold the fair beauty of the Lord. For in the day of trouble he shall hide me in his shelter. And now shall he be lifted up my head. Therefore will I offer in his dwelling an oblation with great gladness. Hear my voice, O Lord, when I call. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The second reading is written in the book, in the, in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 4, beginning at verse 12. Now, when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the lake, in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali. <coughs> so that when he had been, so that when uh, what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun and Naphtali, on the road by the sea, across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light, and for those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. <clears throat> From that time, Jesus began to proclaim, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. <clears throat> Immediately they left their nets and followed him. And as he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in a boat with their father Zebedee. Mending their nets, he called them. Immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. This is the word of the Lord. We'll continue now with hymn number 606, As the Deer Pants for the Water.
May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be now and always acceptable, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Please be seated. <clears throat> Just to recap on that first line of St. Matthew's Gospel, now when Jesus heard that John the Baptist had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. John, the, this is the very beginning of Jesus Christ's ministry, and um, already his friend and cousin, John the Baptist, has been thrown into prison. And of course, as we learned from, from the readings of St. Matthew, um, John the Baptist never got out of jail. <clears throat> he was murdered in the jail. But just before we move on from um, John the Baptist, I'd like to talk a little bit about him this morning because he fades out of the Gospels uh, to a large extent from here on. Apart from Jesus Christ, John the Baptist is probably the most significant figure in the New Testament, certainly in the four Gospels. And as with Jesus, John's birth was meticulously recorded in St. Luke's Gospel. John's birth parallels that of Jesus and echoes the birth of Isaac in the, in the book of Genesis. So for that reason, we'll take a last look at John the Baptist before we move on to Jesus' ministry in the coming weeks. John's early years were lived in obscurity in the desert, but his public ministry ended the 400 year gap between the end of the writings of the Old Testament and before the New Testament writings began. There was a sort of a 400 year gap between the two. And John the Baptist, in a sense, um, sort of bridges that gap with his life. <coughs> So I'd put it like this, in this sense, his message and ministry marked the culmination of the law and the prophets, but heralded the knowledge and the kingdom of God. So John was a transitional figure forming the link between the Old Testament and the New Testament. He spans the ages with one foot firmly planted in the Old Testament and the other squarely placed in the New. The central theme of his ministry was, repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. He was called the Baptist because his practice was to baptize those who responded to the message that he proclaimed and repented of their sins. John was an end times prophet. He conducted his ministry with authority that demanded immediate action. John's lifestyle was as austere as his message. He lived in the wilderness, clothed in camel hair, and ate locusts and wild honey. And unlike Jesus, he expected the people to come to him rather than he going to them. John was no crowd pleaser either. He willingly confronted the hypocrisy of the religious establishment. He did not hesitate to expose the bad in King Herod. And of course, that's why he was thrown into jail. Incidentally, this particular King Herod is the son of King Herod who was there when Jesus Christ was born. That's why King Herod seems to have lasted so well over such a long period. There was actually father, son, etc. name passed down. <clears throat> the original Herod, of course, was called Herod the Great, who was actually a Jew himself. All these characteristics portrayed John as a fiery prophet proclaiming the message of God. Indeed, St. Luke's Gospel says that John came in the spirit and power of Elijah and he goes on to allude to words from the book of Malachi, which states that Elijah will return 
before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Indeed, some followers of John inquired if he were Elijah, but John, of course, denied this. So in this way, Jesus acknowledges the central role that John the Baptist played in God's plan of salvation. John fully accepted his subordinate role to Jesus Christ. He denied that he was the Christ and repeatedly emphasized that he was simply a witness to the light. John did not want to baptize Jesus, but instead he desired to be baptized by Jesus. But for all his greatness, John was merely human. In this sense, he too joined in the popular speculations about the identity of Jesus. Finally, even though John was a witness serving as a traditional figure, the impact of his life and ministry should not be underestimated. During his lifetime, he had a following of disciples who shared common practices such as fasting and prayer. Paul encouraged about a dozen of the disciples, uh, sorry, Paul encountered about a dozen of the disciples of John. They too had been baptized by John. These instances indicated that the Baptist's movement may have more influence than what we are able to find in the New Testament. Interestingly, the desert setting may underscore the stark nature of John's message or may be symbolic of Israel's struggle in the desert. But in conclusion, John the Baptist is of great theological importance in the New Testament. He ended nearly 400 years of silence <clears throat> between the writings of the Old Testament and where the New Testament began and paved the way for the Messiah. He preached a message of repentance and baptism. In his darkest hour, he questioned if Jesus really was the one who was to come or whether there would be another. He inaugurated a spiritual movement that had influence long after his death and extended throughout the Mediterranean world. And so today, we acknowledge the work of John the Baptist. Amen. We continue with the Apostles' Creed, which can be found on page 112. Please stand. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Please kneel or sit for our prayers. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, our Father who art, who art in, heaven, in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, 
and grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide and defend our rulers and grant, and grant our government, government wisdom. wisdom. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness and let, and let your, your servants, servants shout, shout for joy. O Lord, save your people and, and bless, bless those, those whom, whom you have chosen. chosen. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and, and let, let your, your glory be all the over earth. the earth. O God, make clean our hearts within us and renew, and us, renew by us by your Holy Spirit. Spirit. We'll continue on page 114. We'll say together the first two collects. O oh God, the oh God, author, the author of, peace of peace and lover of concord, of concord to, know to know you is eternal, eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. freedom. Defend, Defend us all in all assaults of our enemies that we surely trusting in your protection may not fear the power of any adversaries through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and ever-living God, we give you thanks for bringing us safely to this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger. And in all things, guide us to know and do your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We pray that the light of God will shine in all the dark corners of the church. Set us free from prejudice, small-mindedness, and hypocrisy, that as members of the body of Christ, we can move three, freely through the power of God wherever we are called to go, available and active in good service. Lord, hear us. Lord, you graciously hear us. We pray that our world may be lit by this light in darkness to bring freedom and hope wherever there is oppression. We pray for re recognition and respect where there is none. And in all conflicts, we pray for positive ways forward. Lord, hear us. Lord, you graciously hear us. We pray that in our homes, our workplaces, in our neighborhoods, the light of godly living may soften harsh edges encourage mutual caring and heal dysfunctional or damaging relationships. Lord, on this day, we pray your love may be known in all families. We pray for a deepening and strengthening of the bonds that the entire family, of the entire family life together. We thank you for the gifts of relationship for the blessings of friends and family. Lord, hear us. Lord, you Lord, graciously gracious. hear us. We pray that all those whose lives are fettered by the past, by rejection, by guilt, pain, or anxiety, may be set free and encouraged to live life to the full. God of love, in whom all our wounds are healed and our suffering is soothed, Send into our spirits your healing mercy, that all that is hurting within us may be comforted, and all that is broken within us made whole. Lord, hear us. Lord, you graciously hear us. We pray for those who have died and for those who miss them and are finding it hard to cope with their loss. We pray for all of those who have no one to help them through their last journey. God of us all, you call us to live as citizens of the earth, but also to rejoice in our citizenship of heaven. Lead us on to the pilgrimage of this life that we may be ready to attain the life of your eternal kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord you graciously you. hear us. In a moment of quiet, we bring before the Lord our own prayers and the prayers of those who have visited our church in the past week.
Merciful Father, accept these our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. And the collect for today, the third Sunday after Epiphany, Almighty God, whose Son revealed in signs and miracles the wonder of your saving presence, renew your people with your heavenly grace, and in all our weakness, sustain us by your mighty power. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our offertory hymn is number 595. God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. Go forth into the world in peace, be of good courage, hold fast that which is good, render to no one evil for evil, strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honour all people, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of of his spirit. Amen. And we'll just say together the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Just before we end the service, um, there is tea and coffee for, for you after the service and we'd like you to, to join us for, for a cup of tea or coffee and something to eat. And also just a reminder to the Select Vestry members that there will be a Select Vestry meeting on February uh, the 2nd, I think, isn't that correct? <laughs> yes, uh, in the Ahado room at 7 p.m. Um, and that is a Thursday night, as far as I can remember. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>